action. Hello, ladies and germs. <laughs> it's time for another chemical stir fry. Everything working? Can you hear me? Is all good? All right. All right. Very cool. If Ian gives me the old thumbs up, I know everything's okay. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm just portioning out a couple little batches of this Mold Star 16 stuff, which, as most of you know, is perhaps God's answer to silicone. When you're in a hurry, this is what you grab. This is the stuff that kicks in like 30 minutes. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to show something else really cool that you can do with this stuff. Um, it is known as a casting material, but why stop there? We are going to sh show you that it works as a laminating or a brush-on material as well. So, here's what we're going to do. I got two batches of goop here. See? See? Got these two? Got these two. So this is a batch. This is a batch. This stuff is one-to-one. -one, very easy to use. And so what we're going to do, compliments of Mr. Turtle here, is uh, we're going to mix up a normal batch, show you how it just kind of pours, mm -hmm. you know. And then we're going to take another batch, and I'm going to put some of this miracle stuff in there called Tyvex. And we're going to show you what will happen. And uh, so, without any further ado, let's just do it, eh? Okay. So, one of these, one of those, right? Right. So, remember, the old trick here is whatever you do with one, you do with the other. So, if you don't quite empty the first one, Make sure you don't quite empty the second one either. All right, so, that's what I'm going to do. Mm. That'll work. Eh, a little more. So, plain old fashioned boring. Every old day, whatever you want to call it, Mold Star 16. All right? I'd say nothing special, but the truth of the matter is the fact that it kicks in 30 minutes makes it pretty darn special if you want my humble opinion. Okay, so there it is. Goop, nothing special so far. Haven't done anything special. Cup, watch. You see this? What well, pours, right? It pours very easily. And that's the beautiful thing about this because not only is it fast but because it's thin it will flow which means that you're not dumping globs of goop it's just working exactly the way it's supposed to so there we go by the way you know me I'm pretty cheap um, I'm gonna tell you to Kroger every chance I can uh, or Publix you get the idea um, most of the time I'm very happy and content using a little old cup like this. This little cup happens to be just a three ounce bathroom cup that you can purchase a trillion of for almost no money at all at either of the aforementioned stores or many others. Now, this, however, is the only cool little cup that I'm going to say, you know, you should probably buy it from us. Now, I'm going to try to get this thing close to this camera. Can you see that? Okay. Can you see the little lines and the marks on there? Okay. That is a graduated cup that goes all the way to one whole ounce. So if your big thing here is making little T90 batches, or well, look a heel, you can do it. There's two tablespoons. I think that's right. Okay. And you can go down as low as one half of a tablespoon, although you're really down at the bottom of the cup at that point. But thing is, this isn't so bad. And I think we sell 100 of these for like... 250 or something like that. That would be in American dollars, those of you who are in Swobobia. So, okay. All right, so, so far, nothing special, right? In approximately 30 minutes, this goop will turn into something resembling a solid. All right. Next one. Here's the other stuff. Now, the basic rule of thumb is always do your tinkering in the B side, right? It's a silicone. Put it in the B-side, but I'll be doggone if I can remember which one is which at this stage of the game. Uh, it's been a long day in Lake Wobegon, so here we go. I'm going to put about five drops of this stuff. Isn't that what you used, about five, when you did it earlier? You did ten. Okay, we're going straight for ten. You know the old thing, 
Don't stop at warp speed. Go straight to ludicrous speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so there's ten drops of the magical 5X stuff. This one's still wet. And we'll start there. Boink. I'd have stirred it in there, but this is an awful small cup. So I'm going to stir it in over here. All right, close enough. Trash can. Boink. All right. So, so far, eh, okay, might be a little bit thicker, but we haven't even catalyzed it yet, so let's see what happens when we put some the other stuff in here. All right, here goes. Swami, swami. All right. Yeah, <laughs> my fingers are falling off. All right. So, stir this stuff up. And what do we have now if we try to pour it? Oh, well, isn't that special? There you go. See? Didn't really pour. Let's try that again. Watch. I'm going to do it for the other camera. How are we doing? Okay? All right. Notice how it isn't. It's just kind of flowing. Well, that's pretty cool. All right. So that means, much as we've already done once over here, that if we want, with 10 drops, we've got something that looks like this, right? Okay? And to some small extent, we can sculptify. Oh, there's a big word. I just made it up. Okay? And it kind of sort of more or less stays put. Now, the nice thing about something like this is that, okay, here's a mold. Right? You get in some areas where you have, like, eyeballs. And I know this is not eyeballs, but it gets the point across. All right? With a material that's thickened like this, all right? Now you're able to fill in some of these odd areas, and I would use eyeballs as an example, or nostrils if you're doing um, the human form, or the odd detail in your own personal art project. So you can make them flat, so that in subsequent layers it's much easier to do. See how that worked? Now, I happen to know from clear skinnel experience we can put more in. So let's just go straight to really stupid, stir it in, and see what we get. Now remember, this stuff has a very short pot life, um, but we've got a couple things going for us, one of which is that I'm moving fairly quick. The other thing is, is that it's a little bit colder. And this particular kind of silicone is temperature sensitive. The colder it is, the slower it is. Now there you go. Now we're talking here. Okay. See? See the difference? So now, instead of brushing, we can kind of trowel. See that? Now, normally, we would use the material that we were messing around with last week called Rebound for something like this. And I don't want to sit here and tell you that this is better than Rebound. I cannot, nor will I even go there. Ew, I'm really going to need a napkin. Okay, but what I am going to tell you that's cool is that this stuff sets up in 30 minutes. Okay, so if you're in a big hurry, uh, for you professionals out there, I need not explain to you what big hurry means, but for your slightly other than professional types out there, um, you know, you're finishing your project, and it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and it's due at 8 o'clock. Speed is of the essence. Rebound takes four hours. This stuff takes 30 minutes. You need to make one casting. Which one are you going to go with? Okay? 
So you know what this is? It's called a tool. Okay? Just another one of many. Now, ew, okay. I am um, getting kind of carried away here, but I think I have made my point. We can apply a lot of this stuff in a hurry, and I would say even if you had to do this turtle kind of a thing, you'd finish the whole job in under an hour, okay? And then you'd sit around, you know, have a beer, smoke a cigarette, whatever makes you happy for your 30 minutes, it's done, you demold, make a shell, rock and roll, off you go, done. Okay, now, you know why I have this on? So I can do this. Huh? Who? Where? Oh, he says, why don't you show a close up? Oh, I like that idea, watch this. So this is what the stuff looks like now in the cup. See, it's all thick and goopy. This is what it looks like over here. Now, if I take the stick, it'll let me in. I'll use a different stick. Okay, take the stick. See, already it's even thickening more. Okay, I'd give it another five minutes tops, if that. Well, let me say it differently. I could make another batch right now. By the time that batch was ready to go, this would be ready to accept it. Okay? And the definition of when is it ready to be, uh, to have another coat put on it is when this stuff doesn't want to move around quite so much. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Because if you put another coat right on top when it's still wet, all you're really doing is moving the other stuff around. You're just kind of piling on. So you let it sit just long enough to where it doesn't want to go anywhere, and then you're ready. I hope that makes some sense. Okay, let's set that out of the way. Now, in the end, we end up with material. This is wet. We just did this. But this we did earlier. In fact, I conned Ian into doing this earlier for me. He's such a swell guy. So all we did was take some normal material. In fact, if you want, switch back off this guy to the other camera, and I'll use both hands. Ready? Set? Go. Cool. Okay. Normal. He just poured it. Right? So it holds its detail okay, and it still stretches, right? This happens to be a piece of the uh, rebound that we did. Okay, it's a little tougher. Uh, important to note, this is a Shore A 15, 16-ish, okay? This is a Shore A 25, right? The difference is, is that it takes a little more force to stretch, okay? This is a little bit tougher than this, okay? That's not necessarily saying that this stuff is going to stretch any more or any less than this stuff. It's just that this is going to take more effort, okay? That's what happens when you have a harder silicone. It just takes more effort. Yeah, ultimately, <coughs> this stuff is going to break sooner than this stuff. But it's going to take more force to break this than this. This is like little snakes. He's getting me. Okay. I'm a goofball, but I love it. Okay, so here's the other piece. This is the piece that we put Thyvex in. Okay? So in terms of its elongation ability, let's just give it the old, you know, uh, not so scientific test, okay? I'm not really putting a lot of effort into that. See, I'm not straining or anything, right? I'll do the same thing over here, and I tell you, yeah, it's about the same, okay? So we really didn't change the physical properties any. Now, I will tell you that if you get air bubbles and such in here, it's going to make it a little bit weaker. So you still have to be careful. But the basic physical properties of these two materials, no Thyvex and Thyvex, are unaffected. So you can still count on whatever Mold Star 16 was doing before to do for you here in terms of its ability to uh, hang tough while you're pouring your crazy shapes. Um, so that's a nice thing. All right, now I happen to know because somebody told me that you can do the same thing in the, uh, the 15 and you can do the same thing in the 30, okay? So that means that you've got some, some uh, variety there. If you want to have a material, if you happen to have some Mold Star 30, it's going to end up feeling a little more like this. Um, 
but it'll work. Okay? If you happen to have the 15, it'll work. But you're kind of sort of losing that magic of the 30 minutes. So keep that in mind. Another thing that I also happen to know, and this is pretty cool, is that Moldstar seems to do better with some of the more goofy chemicals that typically would mess up things, mess up under circumstances like, uh, you know, the aliphatics. You pour crystal clear. Uh, crystal clear tends to work pretty well in this stuff. Um, and also uh, low melt metals, pewters and stuff like that. They work pretty well in this stuff. So, it's a tool, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it is. It's a tool. So, what we've got here is a very short demonstration on what happens when you're thinking out of the box. Okay? That's what this is all about. The motto around here is blow it up. Right? Try it. What's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah. You know, Chernobyl. But we'll try to avoid that. Um, I don't have a heck of a lot more to say about this because I kind of already proved my point. Life is good. So, uh, okay, a couple more little things. It's almost Halloween, right? Now, you show up on Halloween in a costume, you're going to get treated, okay? Right here. We're open, 10 to 3, Halloween. We're fully expecting to be busier than the proverbial three-legged dog on a flea farm. We'll also be open Halloween Eve. I don't know what the word is for that one. What is the word for that? Not Day of the Dead, but at any rate. Friday, we'll be open, and we're going to stay open, if you need us to, till about 6. So, last minute stuff, we'll be here. But again, I don't even go this far. Hey, I own the joint. I can do what I want, right? You show up Friday in a costume, you'll get a treat. You show up Saturday in a costume, you'll get a treat. We promise not to laugh at you, but we might laugh with you. There's a difference, right? Okay. Other than that, what is new? Nothing. Good week. Happy to be here. Done. Done. Moldstar 16. Thybex. Okay? It works. We have proven our point. And on that note, I'm going to throw this at Ian, and I'm out of here. Goodbye. <laughs>